How's it going everyone? So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a simple to-do list in React. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, first thing we want to do is we want to set up our constructor. So I'll go ahead and set up that up right now, constructor. And I'll go ahead and throw in props. You don't need to put in props, but I like to do it by convention because um, if you ever want to use this dot props inside your constructor, inside your constructor, you have to go ahead and uh, put constructor with props and super props. So go ahead and did that. Now the next thing that we want to do is set up the state. So the state of this component is going to have two main things. It's going to have the user input, input, and we're going to go ahead and set that to just nothing for now. You'll see why later. Uh, and then we want to make uh, the list itself. So the two main things that are going to be changing in this component are the user input and then the list. So the list is going to be empty, of course, at the beginning, because we want to wait for the user to add stuff to the list. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create the elements. So let's go ahead and make an input on here. Um, so we have our input and then we also we want to have a button. And then when the, the idea is when the user clicks on the button, it'll add something to the list. I'll just say press me, something like that. I guess that works. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some stuff to our input here. And it might get a little confusing, you guys, uh, but uh, follow along and hopefully it'll make sense. So we want to have something called value on here. And this is a built-in HTML thing that just looks at the value of the input. So we want the value of the input to be set to, and now I'm going to make curly braces here. That means that we're escaping from HTML into JavaScript. So now we're entering the land of JavaScript. We're going to go ahead and set the value of the input to this.state dot user input and this refers to the component of course the state refers to the state up here and the user input so uh, what, what we're doing right here is we're saying the value of the input box is going to be set to uh, the this component state of user input so right now it's going to be equal to blank uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to add oh and by the way I'm going to do this here uh, realign these to make it easier to read just makes it easier on the eyes so we want to, we also want to add an on change to this and we want to set this to and now bear with me i'll explain it in a second we want to make an event here we're making an arrow function a fat arrow function uh this dot and then we're going to make we're going to make this function we haven't made it yet but it's going to be called uh, change user input and then what do we want to put in here? We want to put in e.target.value. Okay, uh, let me just make this function real quick. And then I'll explain what's going on here. So what's going on here is there's a built-in thing inside of, of HTML called onChange. And so it's going to fire this every time the input changes. So every time... Uh, the user types something in on their keyboard into the input, it's going to fire this. So it's going to say this, meaning the component. So it's going to look to the component and be like, oh, okay, so this component has a function called change user input. And then I'm going to throw in uh, e.target.value as a value into this function. Uh, the e.target.value is another uh, built-in JavaScript thing. So uh, the event is just the event that's occurring, which is the on change. And then, like I said, it's built in. This event has a target and then that target has a value. And if you actually, if you were to console log E, which I recommend you do, you can see all these attributes such as target on there. So it's gonna take whatever value is currently in the input box, and it's gonna send it over to this change user input function up here. I hope that makes sense. Um, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make, um, well, I suppose we should go ahead and add something to the change user input. Uh, add some stuff into here first. So what we want to do is we want to change the state from blank to whatever the user had typed in, right? So we're going to go ahead and say this dot set state. And by the way, we're using set state because you never want to directly manipulate the state of a component. It's just a React rule, you guys. Never directly affect the state. If you want to change the state, you got to use set state. And uh, I repeat, that is very important. You do not want to mess that up. Uh, okay, so you want to say this dot set state, and we're going to set the user input, which this user input again is referring to this user input up here. So currently it's blank. We want to set that that state equal to the input. This input is of course referring to this input here. So let me walk through it real quick again. So it's going to here it's going to call change user input up here, and it's going to pass in 
e.target.value is going to pass in the value of the input. So that input here, at this value, is this value right here. It's passing it in. So it's saying, here you go, change user input. Here's this value that I'm passing in here. And we're calling it input inside the function. We're just calling it something else. So we don't have to say e.target.value every time. So take the input from the input box and set the state, the user input of the state, equal to that input. All right. So the next thing that we want to do, oh, and by the way, let me just show you guys a quick trick here. Uh, the set state actually can take two arguments, the first one being this object here, but it can also take another argument and that's a function. So a neat thing you can do is you can actually uh, make a simple arrow function just for the sole purpose of console logging uh, what result you get. So if we were to console log the input, we could just use this as a means to see if our app is working. Um, and you can see, as you can see, I'm actually getting an error here. It says super outside class constructor, and it looks like it's because I misspelled constructor. Whoopsie. Hopefully that fixes it. And now we have another, oh, we got a semicolon here. Let's see if that works. And it looks like we're golden. So when we type in here, we have that console log function. So hopefully we can see actually what we're typing here. And as you can see, when I'm typing on the keyboard, it's actually console logging whatever I type in. So that's exactly what we want. So now, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that, just so it's not in the way, I suppose. All right, so now we have our change user input function setting the state equal to the input of whatever the user typed in. The next thing we want to do is we want to add an on click to this button here. So let's go ahead and make an on click. It's going to be equal to, and then again, we're going to escape to JavaScript, and we're going to make another arrow function here. And we're going to set this to, okay, so it's going to be this. Uh, and once again, I haven't made this function yet, but I'm going to go ahead and just call it what I want to call it. So we're going to make a function in a second here called add to list. And what if I were going to pass in, we're going to pass in uh, the state, the, the user input of the state. And like I said, I'll explain this in a second. So if this is confusing, don't worry, I'll explain it in just a second here, uh, right after I create that function. So we're going to add to list, it's going to get a value. Okay. So this button is what it's going to do is it's going to add whatever is uh, whatever the user had typed in, whatever is from the state, whatever the user input on the state is, it's going to add that to a list. So of course, uh, we're going to want to make an array. So I'm going to use the new let instead of we could use var, but I'm going to use let. So we're going to have let's we'll call it list array. So we're going to say let list array be equal to the state of of the list the list on the state. So remember, we set it equal to an empty array. So we're going to make this uh, variable here equal to that state. So we have that there. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to say list array dot push. We want to what do we want to push? We want to push the input. All right? Okay, so now we have this this uh, basically what it's going to do here, because remember I told you we never want to directly affect the state, right? Just like we did up here, we, we set state because we didn't want to directly affect it. Uh, we don't want to directly affect the list here. We don't want to push directly into the list, right? So we want to make a copy. This is all this is doing. This is the reason why we're doing it. We're making a copy of the this.state.list and we're setting it equal to a variable called list array. So now we have a clone essentially and we're pushing into that clone. And then what we can go ahead and do after we've made that clone, we can just say, uh, this dot set state. So we're using the set state again, and we're going to say uh, the list is going to be equal to list array. So one more time, real quick. All it's doing is we're making a clone of whatever the state of the the list on the state is. Right now it's blank, and so the user types something in. They click the button. That data from the input gets sent to here. Uh, then that we make an array set to the state list, and then we get we push whatever the value that the user typed in into that array, and then the state gets sent to that new array. Um, hopefully this will make sense at the end. Uh, another thing, well, actually I'll just show you guys what will happen uh, if we try to run this. Let me show you guys. So I'm just going to type in, so I press this, um, oh, hold on, I actually forgot to, let's see, what did I forget here, one second. Oh, I. <laughs> I actually left out something uh, pretty important here. Uh, we don't have, we're not actually rendering anything of, of the list. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create an unordered list. And then as the value, 
so check this out. We're going to escape to JavaScript, right? And we're going to say this dot state dot list, right? So it's referring to this list up here. Uh, and now we want to do a dot map. And the reason why we want to do a dot map is because we're going to actually loop through all the values of this of this array. So if we had, let's say we had values in here, right? That the, the user was typing in. Um, it's going to the map is going to loop through each of these and display it as li's. And I'll show you guys how we're going to do that. So we have a dot map. And then we want to go ahead, dot map. We're going to make another arrow function with a value. And we're going to say, make a list item, right? We're going to make a list item. And then this is kind of confusing because we, we escaped to JavaScript earlier, but we're going to escape again because we just, we just went to HTML land right here, right? So we want to escape once again. Uh, and so what value is going to go into each of those LIs? Is this going to be the value? this value right here. Um, and then I'll just make another closing. All right, so now hopefully if I go back to here and add something to the list. So let me just type in something random. As you can see, don't mind that error. Um, when I'm typing in stuff into the input, it's adding it, but notice how it's kind of inconvenient for the user because the, as every time I type in and click, it doesn't erase what I previously had done, right? So the way to fix that, it's actually a pretty simple fix. Back here where we added the user input onto the list, we can just say, okay, so, so change that array of the list on the state, but then also, don't just do that, also make the user input equal blank again. Because the reason why it kept adding, adding upon the value every time I pressed uh, the button is because it was setting the state, the user input of the state to whatever was typed in, but we never told it to go back to blank. So if I typed in, you know, um, AAA or something like that, uh, it would say, okay, so now this, the user input on the state is AAA. And so then it would add that to the list when I click the button. But then after um, I click the button, it, it would, the state would still be the same. It would still be AAA. So if I typed in like DDD, then it would just add that on. It would just tack that onto the AAA that would already existed. So what we want to do is we want to say uh, here, uh, all this is doing is saying, okay, so after you you uh, submitted that new input to the array, go ahead and make the input uh, blank again. So now, as you can see, if I uh, wait for this to load, so if I say like, uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna type something in uh, and I hit, hit the button. Now it erases whatever I had typed in. So now if I type, you know, Apple uh, chips, oops, chips, <laughs> um, you can see that it actually erases it for me, which is pretty convenient, right, for, for our user if we were to make an actual app here. Um, that's basically it, you guys. If I think the most confusing thing, at least in my view, was well, maybe this map. Uh, I could see this being pretty confusing. Uh, so I guess the best way I can explain it is it's just looking at, because the the state list is an array, right? So imagine that there's um, values in here, right? So we have values in there. Um, and so it's just gonna take that list array and it's gonna loop through each one. And each of those values that it's looking at, one, two, three, so it's gonna loop through, so it's gonna start the first one. So that first one is this value here. And that's just a built-in thing in JavaScript. If you, if you don't understand that, then um, go check out how to use dot .map and you'll hopefully learn why. So it's gonna loop through each of these values and each time it's looking at one of these values, that single item in the array is going to be the value here. So that's why we told it to spit out an li with the value. So it's gonna look at the first one saying, okay, what's the first value? Oh, it's value one. Okay, so make a list item of value one and then go to what's the next one, value two? Okay, make a list item of value two. So I, I hope that makes sense. And uh, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you enjoyed, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.